गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन हु वॉचिंग लाइव एंड हु विल बी वॉचिंग द रिकॉर्डेड वर्शन इट्स गुड आफ्टरनून इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड इट्स गुड मॉर्निंग इन इंडिया सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी मोर टाइम वी आर हैप्पी टू हैव विद जेरड लिथम सर एंड नो मोर टॉकिंग सर जस्ट ब्रिंग अब अवर होस्ट आफ्टर द थर्टी सेवन काउंट डाउन प्लीज सो लेट स्टार्ट Good morning from India and good afternoon, Jared from Australia. We have with us today a very young and dynamic coach from Australia, Jared Latham, and uh, he will be discussing uh, with us about batting fundamentals and mindset in batting in cricket. And uh, good afternoon, Jared. And it's a uh, morning in India and afternoon over there. welcome uh, on behalf of jagachathana zonal sports association india uh, it's over to you i like to introduce few of our students who will be interacting with you uh, and uh, we have uh, this show in live on youtube i'll request orko to bring our students who are available on the backstage Ashmit Kumar Banerji a left-hander batsman a captain uh, all-rounder he is our under 17 captain we have Mohammad Asif who is under 15 all-rounder uh, batsman and bowler we have wicketkeeper no we have Ayush Kumar over here under 12 batting all rounder we have shatik roy on top he is a keeper batsman under 17 uh we have this four students now over to you jared for your session today hey boys hope you are well um first and foremost i am on phone right now so it's very hard for me to see names so if i am like leaning in trying to like read your name just mind me but we're going to get started boys so today we're going to go over a few lessons okay as bijo said obviously i'm going to talk about batting fundamentals because it's something that a lot of people are getting wrong right now the if you can get this right what will happen well you can actually make large shifts in performance if you get this wrong well if you get this wrong Well number 1 you won't see the large shifts in performance number 2 you'll have form slumps which obviously no batsman like um number 3 you just won't see the performances that you really want to see and ultimately when you're young and obviously in India there's a lot of talent like Australia you guys have a large pool of players to choose from when you're getting through to those state cricket levels and obviously international levels you have a very large pool of players to choose from so these are fundamentals that can set you apart from another batsman in your area in your state potentially in your country okay now the good thing is a lot of indians do get this right but some don't and there's main these main fundamentals are going to improve your game and make large shifts in your performance okay So we're going to talk about around five or six of these. So this can obviously be a really good session for you guys. And then we're going to go over mindset as well. So we're going to cover about five or six mindset lessons also, and these are going to really help you as well. Some of you will be introduced to some stuff that you may not have heard about before, or it might just be new stuff, which is obviously good. I'm sure. there has been sessions before where you may have come on and you're like yeah i know that or i know about that 
I really want to aim to make this session different from that and obviously make it um, interactive. So obviously I've asked you all to get your bats as well. If you're watching on like a live stream right now on YouTube, I'm sure there's a few people watching. Just have your bat nearby, guys. You can follow along and this can be really, really good for you. We're going to start with the mindset lesson anyway. So basically we're going to start with how to deal with setbacks. Um, number two, we'll cover meditation and why it's important. Number three, we'll look at emotional variance and how this will impact your performance. Number four, we'll look at comparisons. So I'm sure a lot of you boys would find yourself comparing to possibly someone who's a little bit further along in their journey or someone who might be scoring more runs than you. So I'm going to give you some tools and some analogies to sort of work through that. We'll also, at the end, we'll go through a little bit of a meditation routine and we'll sort of build your routine um, to be able to perform. We'll also look at pre-performance routines as well and how those can sort of help you perform. So first of all, um, the interactive part of this will be more towards the end, obviously, of the mindset part where we're doing our meditation and things like that. All right. So first of all, we're going to look at dealing with setbacks. So just give me a thumbs up if you've ever had a low score before. If you've ever got out under 10, put your thumbs up in the camera. Just be like, who's got out under 10 before? Everyone's thumb should be up because I don't think everyone scored over 10 every time they've batted, all right? Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So first of all, like we see in cricket, like a lot of older batsmen, are really, really mature and they're good at getting performances and dealing with setbacks. So first of all, when you're young, it's obviously important to realize that it's going to happen. First and foremost, it's going to happen, boys. If you have a pen and paper handy as well, hopefully you do. If you don't, just get a pen and paper and you can write some of these down as we go. So point number one on dealing with setbacks is be mature enough to realize it's going to happen, okay? It's just going to happen. Whether you're under 12s right now or you're playing for India, it's going to happen, all right? You have to also look at the root of the issue. Like, is it a mindset thing? Or is it that you lack the skills right now? Or it could be both. And for most people, it is both, okay? So a lot of studies show that negative emotional states lack of confidence, which can happen when you're young as well, or a reduced motivation, they inhibit performance. Now, you guys, I'm sure you're all super motivated, which wouldn't be an issue. But potentially, sometimes it might be a confidence issue, and it might not even be inside cricket. You might be an insecure person like I was back when I was 15, 16, and trying to play in teams. I wasn't secure enough for myself to go out and perform how I wanted to. So have you guys ever thought like that you're getting yourself out? Who, who's gone out to a really bad bowler before? Who couldn't bowl very well? Give me a thumbs up. Anyone got out to a really bad bowler before? Anyone? Yeah, we got a few thumbs up. Cool, guys. Cool. We've got some thumbs up. Awesome. So, like, Michael, you got to ask yourself, like, how many, how many good balls did you get out to this season? Like, or last, let's look at last season for you guys. How many good balls actually got you out? Anyone, anyone want to, anyone want to give me a number? If you want to say, please, uh, can come up. Smith, if you want to say. So, like, uh, eight, nine times. You felt like you got a genuinely, like, a really good ball that yes, sir. just got you out. That's pretty high number. How many games do you play in a season? Like 50 or 60. 50 or 60, yeah. So that's quite low when we're looking at, like, the total number of games, yeah? Yes, sir. Fair enough. Anyone else? How many good balls got you out, Sawick, last season? I just repeat again, Sawick. Sir, four balls. 
about four, yeah, out of a lot of games. Do you play 60, like 50, 60 games? 30, 40. 40 games. Yeah, so a very, like, a very low, low number. We'll just go one more, one more, put one more person. Just for this, just for this question. Are you how many how many good good balls like genuinely good balls got you out last season? Ten to twelve. Ten to twelve. And how many games do you play in a season? As ten to twelve, uh, eleven or twelve. Good balls. <laughs> eleven to twelve good balls. Yes. So, how many games do you play in a season? I don't remember that. Uh, Ayush, you played almost 30 plus games this season. I don't uh, Jared, uh, all the boys uh, club together, we played uh, 101 matches. Mm -hmm. Now, the kids below 12, they had played on an average post up, and uh, Ayush, they played 30 plus games. Mm -hmm. The kids of 17 and above, uh, they had played almost 50 plus games. Mm. There you go. Yeah, so that's, we're seeing now, like, this is quite a small number of actual, like, good balls that are getting us out, right? So we're seeing, like, a bit of a pattern now where it's either, but for most part of your season, you're either getting out to a uh, really, really, really good ball for a small part of it, or ma majority of the time, it's either a mindset or it's a skill issue. So another reason why it's important, again, to review and look at how you're getting out, okay? Um, whether that's mindset or skill. Okay, we're going to look at like, we're going to look at some different things now. We're going to look at pessimistic attitude. So if you don't know what that word means, it's someone that thinks really poorly about themselves, about life, about things like that. They might have something, they might have something that annoyed them and it'll probably really affect them for a long time. And we're going to look at an optimistic style as well. So if you've got like a pen and paper, you can write this down too pessimistic style obviously very negative thoughts about life optimistic style very positive thoughts okay like really good thoughts about life so these two styles are a blend and we can see that optimistic style these people are <laughs> people like williamson's like coley's things like that they're very like positive about their life Someone that isn't could be someone maybe in England, in the England team right now that are getting out consistently. Their performances run into, like, bad performances lead into more bad performances. So we're seeing those two styles, and we'll dive into that a little bit more. So obviously these two styles, like a pessimistic style, you, it can lead to, it can lead to a, a reduction in your expectations, so you might walk out to bat next time and you might be like, oh, well, I'm not going to score runs because I keep getting out. I suck. You know what I mean? So it leads to a reduced expectation in performance. So I'm going to dive into both of these a little bit deeper. So if you've got a pen and paper, again, you can write these down, try and take some notes. Pessimistic explanatory style. So these are people who blame themselves for negative events. So blame themselves for getting out. They believe that this will continue indefinitely. So when I read this and I'm coaching other people out of this, I start going back to my youth years and what it looked like for me. And it was, this was very much what it looked like for me. Like I thought, oh my God, like I need to get, I need to get picked for this team. Like if I, if I, if I can't score runs, I'm not going to get selected for this. And it, that starts weighing on you. Okay. So it's important to have tools to get out of this, which we'll dive into. So, as I said before, you see the negative aspects of life. Um, you think the worst will happen. You lack hope and belief when like negative things happen. You can have a lot of trust issues. So we basically want to shift your internal over time. We want you to see the possibilities of your own career, okay? 
when trying to look at shifting your internal beliefs and that doesn't just happen overnight boys that's the thing you really need to work on yourself and anyone that's possibly at school right now it's going to sound terrible but the best thing you can do after school is actually focus on yourself and, and internally rather than trying to go out and do everything and work and, and do everything try and really focus on yourself and building your own character up and that's obviously going to help you in your life after school so we're going to have a look at optimistic style so people that believe the event is short lasting okay so these people think that when they get out it's going to be very very short this is specific to this event so let's say one of you boys get out right let's say you have a bad weekend these sort of people believe that it won't affect your internal it won't affect you next week it won't affect you next year it's singular to that event only and that you won't well basically you won't dwell over that event you'll still be really motivated to train you'll still be really motivated to play next week um you'll actually have improved performance you'll actually get better and you'll be better at problem solving okay so just give me a thumbs up boys if that makes sense hopefully that makes sense just give me up hopefully that made sense sir can you repeat one more time sure man i will repeat so you want me to repeat the pessimistic and not the mystic side Op opt yes sir i am having a net problem uh, the words are cutting yeah i'm getting from sound through here too man that's all good i'll explain them again hopefully we get these all right so so pessimistic people who blame themselves for big events they believe that these will continue indefinitely so they think that when if i if i get out here it means i'll get out next week the same way or i'll get out the next week after that you'll see the negative aspects of life you'll lack hope and belief when negative events occur and obviously you want to shift your internal away from that here's optimistic again so people believe that let's say you get out they believe that that's only singular to that event and they believe that it's short lasting so they believe that that won't change for the next week okay they believe that you'll be able to walk out next week and you'll be able to score runs okay they actually think it's consequential of other people or the event itself so that these sort of people don't tend to blame things so much on themselves they'll still be able to look at themselves but they won't attribute it all all to their internal they won't dwell another thing they won't dwell on it this means that they'll be able to be motivated to train they'll be motivated to play next week and they'll be able to score runs and back up another performance okay these people are good at problem solving and they have a lot of improved physical and mental performance in cricket so just give me a thumbs up again if that made sense i feel like our sounds better now so quick thumbs up for me boys if that made sense yeah we got a thumbs up cool okay all right let's look at reviewing your performance now so first obviously i said before you have to look at your performance and work out what happened was it mental or was it skills for young cricketers usually that's both okay so you want to set relatively stable expectations for the next time you bat okay so if you are if you got man if you if you just had a shocker weekend you might want to just set nice expectations for the next time you bat don't just walk out going oh my god i'm going to get 100 today just set a nice easy expectation for when you bat don't and and another thing is don't attach yourself to your scores okay that's probably the one of the biggest things i see with young people is they think if they get a bad score that they have to be angry or sad or frustrated about it for days you're the same person whether you get a duck 
whether you get 10, whether you get 100, you are the same damn person, okay? So you can't attach yourself to the scores that you that you get, all right? Um, so obviously this is going to build your resilience if you're able to deal with a bad performance and then come back the next week. It'll give you a lot of resilience to be able to perform, okay? So let's look at, let's go, let's dive into meditation for a second, boys. So that's something that I want to talk about that not a lot of coaches will talk about. So there was a year in, I think, 2017, 2017, I was having some of the worst form of my life, okay? And I went to Australian sports psychologist at the time. So he was working with the Australian cricket team while he was uh, while they were away in the Ashes and things like that. So this is obviously going to be beneficial. One thing he told me, which has stuck with me forever, is that we need to keep our mind clear, okay? And you would have heard this before, but in a different way. So we have a part of our brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is in the front of our brain. If this is flooded with thoughts or it's flooded with stress or you're really nervous and, and you can't move, it's going to block, it's going to block your ability to move effectively. So if you use your footwork, um, if you don't unweight your bat or, or with your back lift, it's going to affect everything. So if you've ever had a run of bad scores, possibly you've had a few, single digit scores in a row this is probably what's happening okay you're probably getting your mind filled with stuff so what did he do what did the sports psychologist tell me to do there was one session i went in and he put a beeping noise through the speaker and he was basically telling me to meditate and i was like what what do you mean what do you mean meditate like I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a cricketer like that's not important but this one thing helped me have my best season yet okay and it's continued to help me and it's continued to help my clients who man one one i'll tell you about one of my clients who he was batting number 11 we worked on his fundamentals we worked on his mindset now he's batting number four, right? So he's not even a bowler anymore. He went from a tail ender to batting number four in his team and scoring over or averaging well. So this one thing helped me so much. We're gonna we're actually gonna do a little exercise um, at the end of the section where we'll go over a few meditate and a few breathing techniques for you to use. Um, when you're playing, okay. Okay, let's cover emotional variance now. So, I'm going to go over a few points here. So, number one, like, boys, if you're going to perform at your best, who's watched, who here has watched Kane Williamson bat? Anyone? Give me a thumbs up if you've seen the bat. I'm sure you guys have seen Kane Williamson bat. Yeah, thumbs up. We got one. We got one thumbs up. Only one of you has seen Kane Williams from that. Quick that. Yeah, we've got two. Good work. All right, cool. So, Kane Williams is the perfect example of someone that controls his emotions. So, if you want to remember something from this call, it's to control your emotional state. So, if let's say like our emotional state is really high and we're under a pressure situation, you're freaking out, what do you think is going to happen? Probably going to get out. We've got another, another problem like that. We're probably going to get out, okay? So you need to keep your emotion level. And one way we do that is obviously with meditation, okay? The same with life. So the better you get, even with life, if your emotions are stable, who here has gotten really angry before? Who's been so mad at something that happened at home? You're just like, Rah. give me a thumbs up if you've been really mad or really emotional before. Yeah, we got one. 
I know you yeah, would have been mad. You, you guys have definitely got out for me and been really mad. Okay, cool. So if we can like just manage these emotions, boys, your performance will be so much better. It will be so much better, okay? It can be with life too. If you start practicing this stuff with life and you can start leveling out your emotions, again, your performance will be better. All right, so we're going to look at comparisons. Give me another thumbs up, boys, if you've ever compared yourself to one of your teammates. Who's compared themselves to a teammate or maybe to a professional player or to be someone who's a little bit further along than you are? Who's compared themselves before? Give me a thumbs up again if, you, if you've done this. Um, are you getting uh, getting the words, Ritik, uh, then Satik, everyone? That the voice is not clear. Oh, maybe the voice is not clear then. Uh, Gerald, sir, uh, please uh, just check out. Maybe there is some internet snacks. Yeah, I'm just having some uh, problems with sound on this side, man. It's breaking up. Maybe there is some problem with the sound, I guess. Basically, uh, mm -hmm. uh, interrupting you in between this, uh, let me just introduce to you, this is our guest student, uh, Ritwik Kumar Rai. He is from Siliguri. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, I'll... How are you going, man? Ritwik, are you able to hear us? Yes, sir. Uh, then Gerald sir is communicating with you. Please uh, communicate. Yes, sir. Hey. Okay, going then. I think he is not able to hear you, sir. <laughs> yeah. There is some problem with the internet. Man, it's just too. This is too popular. This is what it is. <laughs> Everyone's here. Maybe, sir. Uh, continue until then. Ritwik, if you want to uh, get the recorded version, you can get, uh, you can watch the recorded version. I think there is some internet issues with you two also, because in my side it's uh, showing clear. A ah, little bit of audio next, but it's it's clear for now. I'll say. Yeah, okay, Ritwik. Yeah, it's um, breaking up a little bit over here. Like, I can still pick up what you're saying. Uh, you cannot hear me right now, right? I can understand what you're saying, but it's just it's like crackling. I guess. It's like cracking, I would say. Like TV static sort of thing. Uh, it's backing up. It's because of internet. Yeah. This internet thing. So you just continue. You just continue. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let the internet snacks uh, go okay. on and so, see how much it takes. Just go on, sir. Continue. Okay, cool. That's fine. I'm good to, good to keep going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you got can. A thumbs up. <laughs> Dude, love the commitment. Yes, sir. You continue, sir. With your session. All right. Cool. Perfect. All right. So, obviously, we're going to look at comparing yourself. And there was one analogy that was taught to me from one of my business coaches. And he talked about, he talks about trees, okay? Which is really weird when we talk about cricket. But it was like, the only thing trees are relative to cricket is that they make the bats. But if we look at in a mindset perspective, if a tree has been standing, let's say, let's say a tree has been standing for 20 years, all right? The question is, how many winters do you think the tree had to go through to get to that level? How many hard times, how many storms, how many tough times did that tree have to go through to get to that level? Well, the answer is a lot, right? So... The point is, 
you can't compare yourself to other other players, other batsmen, other people, because you don't know what they've been through. Okay, so that's a that's a danger of comparing yourself, and it can make you feel insecure as well, obviously, and that can inhibit your performance. Okay, so this is one thing that is going to help you really, really be able to have your best performances week in, week out and not have to compare yourself to someone else and be able to enjoy cricket as well. Because when you're coming up, when you're in under 17s, that's an age that's really tough. Um, but these are things that you have to remember. Okay. Now, let's look at meditation. So I'm going to do like a little a little follow along uh, meditation session right now. All right. So I'm going to give you the most basic uh, meditation thing, uh, I guess, strategy in the world. Okay. This is really, really simple. So if you want to follow along with this, dude, I, when I was younger, I thought that this was the most uncool thing ever. Like I thought meditation, like that's, <laughs> that's so not cool. But this is going to help you. Okay. So this is stuff that you can use when you're batting, when you're feeling stressed, when you're walking out to bat, it helps me. It just helps you be present. Okay. So what are you going to do? You're going to close your eyes, first of all. So when you close your eyes, now, what are you going to do? You're going to take a four second breath, breathe in for four seconds, a four second hold, and then a four second release. So what you're going to do is show your eyes. You're going to go, one, two, three, four, in. Four second hold. And four seconds out. That's all you're going to do. Ready? Four second hold at the bottom. Four seconds in. Four second hold. Four seconds out. And I'm just going to do this two more times, okay? Because I want to show you some more. Four seconds hold at the bottom. Four seconds in. Four second hold. Four seconds out. So that's one. That's one method that we're going to use. Okay. Who feels who feels calmer? Who feels more relaxed after that? Me too. Some of you might even some of you might sleep and that's fine too if you ever fall asleep doing this don't worry um you just wake back up and you keep going that's it so there's this there's one there's, there's a few of these guys there is a few Ah, we're back. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened there, but I'm back. Maybe it was of internet issues. All right. I, I well, who, feel, who felt more relaxed after that, more calm? Just give me a thumbs up if you felt more calm, more relaxed after that. This can change your journey. Trust me. There's one more, though, and this is more of an advanced one. So that other one that we used... Let's say you've got like a few minutes before you have to go out and bat where you feel like you've got a couple of minutes. That's something you can just do really fast that you can just break into and it's going to help you straight away, okay? Now, we're going to do a bit of an advanced one, all right? So what we're going to do 
You don't even have to shut your eyes for this one. We're going to do pretty fast breaths, okay? We're going to go 40 fast breaths, okay? That's what we're going to start with, 40. And then we're going to hold our breath after that for about 45 seconds. If you can't hold it 45 seconds, just hold it for as long as you can, as long as you can without passing out, okay? <laughs> Don't pass out on me. But this is what we're going to do, okay? Fast breaths like this. Now, I'm like, I've got a little bit of a head cold, so usually you just, just breathe through your mouth. That's fine. Really fast. We're going to go three, four. We're going to do that for 40, okay? You're going to follow along with me. Then we're going to all hold our breath for about 40, 45 seconds, all right? So I'm going to count you in. We're all going to do this because no one's too cool for school here, all right? So you ready? Three, two, one, go. 40 fast breaths. Should be 40. Now we're going to hold. Ready? Three, two, one, hold. I got it. <laughs> Forty. Who made it? Everyone made it. <laughs> Good work. All right, cool. So that was another one, and some one, some of the boys are like, "Oh, oh my gosh!" Because by the end of it, you'll find you start. If you've ever been in a pool or in water before, and you've tried to stay under for as long as you can, that's sort of what the last, I'd say, ten seconds feel like. But it's like a nervous, a nervous system reset. So that probably took about a few minutes, a couple of minutes. Again, that's another one you can use. Even in life, if you're stressed, use it. Cricket, use it. Like, it's just this reset to keep you present. I'm sure. To, um, who feels who feels present after that? Who feels more relaxed? Just give me a thumbs up. Yeah, good, good. Everyone's got a thumb up. Awesome. Another one. Guys, this is so valuable. So damn valuable. Anyone, um, I'm just going to like have a few people to talk like what are some takeaways so far what are some lessons that you've learned so far ask me i'll ask you first what are some lessons you've learned so far man uh, so what in my, what type of lessons you're talking about i don't understand i think you might be muted man or I might be having more problems with the sound so, can you listen? We might have to drop it in the chat because I feel like we're having some issues with the sound. Hello. Boys, we might have to drop this in the chat. Hit the chat or, oh no, we've got video here. Yeah, having some more problems with the sound video. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, you all can write in the chat, in the live chat as well as in the studio chat box. Uh, I'll just uh, talk to them in Bengali for a second. Ato kun jeta uni kore dakhalen, but omra nijera ona shete interact kolle sheta the ki bujle. Jodi Englishi the bujte oshubide thake, amake bolo I'll get it done for you. Ami Bangla tomade jigesh korbo, tomra uttorta dao. Jodi bujte oshubide hai, I'll translate and get it back together. Ashmit bujte bacho. Ashmit? Yeah, I think he's on mute actually. I feel like he's he might be. Ashmit, unmute Koro. All are muted. Yeah. Everyone's muted. Ashmit has gone to uh, touch the back button. Ayush, unmute yourself and uh, talk to us. 
there is Ashmit back in the show. Ayush, bolo. Yes, sir. Ki bujle, unni jeta kordle, unni jeta jigesh kordche. Ki bujle, ki shikle. What you have learned? I have learned that meditation is also important for cricket and that's a stability for the cricket. 100% love it, man. Love it. So, yeah, meditation is important for cricket. That's the most recent one. Who's got some older um, from the other con the other content? Yeah, Asif. Asif. Yes, sir. Unmute, Colonel. Ki shikle. Oni jeta bolle. Kya sikha unse abhi? Batao. Bahut kuch sikha. हाँ क्या सीखा अभी तक उन्होंने जितना कराया एक ब्रीडिंग ब्रीड आउट फिर फोर्स ब्रीडिंग क्या सीखा ओके मूव ऑन टू रितिक रितिक यू टेल रितिक so first of all, some exercises are that uh, first orders for keeping our mind calm. And secondly, is uh, 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 told us about how to handle failures. Example, uh, Wayne Williamson. Uh, Jaro, did you get him? What he said? Yeah, I'm. I can't hear. He said he had learned a bit how to handle failure and how to concentrate with the meditation technique you had just taught. Yeah. The sound is very like crackled. Sorry for interrupting, but I have a question. Your sound is cracking, Jared. Your sound is cracking. Probably you're using some dictaphone or microphone like. Refresh. Yeah, now it's okay. Ashmit, Ashmit, uh, you were saying something. Bolo. Sir, I sir, I mean, hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, I have written in the chat. So please, my my mic is disturbing. So please. Okay. To never feel down or frustrated, and meditation is important for cricket to keep calmness. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, uh, Jared uh, Orko had suggested that if you uh, rejoin again, because there is some uh, alteration in the sound. Yeah, yeah, I'll rejoin. Sorry. Yeah, please rejoin again. Sir, I have a question. In between, Baki der boli, jodi tomade English the bujte onik shama communicate korte ek tu oshubide hai. Never hesitate. Bangla bolo, Hindi the bolo. Ami translate koro do. Ami ba orko dada kyo na kyo translate koro debe. Never hesitate. Jared is a young, energetic coach. Ebang o je jinish kono akhon sabar sathe share korte chaiche. It's something. Unique. A genius take into higher level gear, shekano hoy. Take a che. Amra ekhane o hato onik boys com. Welcome back, Jared. Over to you. Yeah, I think it's better. Anytime it's better now. Yeah. Anytime that happens, I'm just gonna like rejoin because, yeah, there's probably no point trying to sort it out. So if I crack up or like it sounds just cracking up, I'll just refresh it, boys. So if I disappear for a sec. Don't mind me. Okay, cool. So we had a few. We had a few um, going over meditation and um, a few in the chat. Boys, if you didn't get a chance to speak, just drop any top takeaways in the chat. I'll leave it open for like... Uh, Ashmit had already written. Right now, if you haven't spoken yet or possibly... Ashmit had written over there. To never feel down or frustrated, and meditation is important for cricket to keep calmness. Mm -hmm. Ashmit has written in the studio chat, the internal chat. Yeah, 
and anyone else that hasn't spoken or a few of you are cracking when when you were talking just drop it in the chat drop any takeaways any top takeaways just drop them in the chat boys let's get this chat going Ritwik had asked sir how to handle sledging while i am batting yeah dude man great question great question because you know aussies <laughs> man if you think sledging's bad over where you are man i have some stories i'll, I'll tell you some stories and i won't be able to use the words that were spoken to me because they're not for kids but i can tell you some stories man one time i think i was 14 and making my like first grade debut so that was like at a club um or 13 maybe 13 i was man and uh a, a queensland so a queensland bulls player so a state cricketer was playing in that game um bowling to me man he called me every name under the sun every name under the sun and how to deal with sledging it's a big one because when you're a junior and i don't know if it's similar for you guys but when you're a junior who agrees that sledging doesn't matter as much like if it's just one of your like a, a junior player sledging you to me like it doesn't matter as much but when you get into senior cricket and you start playing with players that you're, you're looking up to and they might be sledging you just like you're like what so the best way for me to describe how to deal with it personally you've got to build you've got to build your self-confidence and that's the hardest thing to do when you're young because opinions matter when you're young maybe when you when you get to like man in your early 20s they don't matter as much but the best way that i can say to build that self-confidence is to have a mentor have someone that you go to someone that you talk to that builds your self-confidence and knows how to that's the biggest thing knows how to deal with it if you're in game right and someone's sledging you type person one person one probably ignores it right ignores it walks down the pits go through the same routines that you use when you walk out right so you might walk down tap the pitch breathing techniques right you're just trying to be present that's all it is think of sledging as someone trying to take you out of the present moment and into Oh my God, stressed. Oh my God, this guy's sledging me. Oh my God, he just called me a name. Oh my God, he swore at me or whatever it is. This is just someone, switch it and it's just someone trying to take you out of the present moment. So the best thing you can do is be in the present moment, okay? And how do you do that? Well, you learn how to cope, right? You use your breathing techniques to cope. You use your pre-performance routines that we, we have to talk about here you use those routines to bring yourself back to present. One routine that I used that I copied, shout out to Brendan McCullum. I'm sure you guys know who that is. He had a routine where he'd walk down, tap the pitch, he'd walk back, he'd do a little crouch, and then he'd walk back again and tap the pitch, and then he'd walk back. That was just something that got him in the in the present moment. Who who here has a pre-performance routine anyway? We'll like we'll use that as a piggyback to the next thing. Who has a pre-performance routine? Something that they do every time they walk out. Give me, just give me a thumbs up. You don't have to talk. Who has a pre-performance routine? Under seventeen player should definitely have a routine. Nice, nice. We have a couple of thumbs up. Yeah, everyone, good. Okay. So you're gonna use that if someone's sledging you. You're gonna use, take part of it or take some of it and use it to come back to present okay that's all you're gonna do it's as easy as that person i said person one before might ignore it right go through the routines person two i i coley sometimes he loves the contest the aussies love the contest wagner from new zealand loves the contest matt wade from australia people like that that type of person gets into the contest and that's what I used to be like when I was a junior. I used to just get into the contest and I, I maybe I'd say something back, which some, there's some people that just works for. For me, it stopped working because I started playing in junior cricket that worked because I knew, right? I, I knew in junior cricket that this is going to sound arrogant, but it's a confidence thing. I knew that I was good, so I didn't worry about it. But when I got to senior cricket, that changed. 
because these people have been uh, uh, have cemented their place above me, right? So it actually started affecting me, and that's where I needed to go to a psychologist, learn these tools. Okay, hope that all made sense. All right, but now we're going to get into the good part about it. Okay, this is going to be the fundamentals part. So everyone has their back, which is awesome. I'm going to go through some main fundamentals that you need to be successful in cricket. I'm just going to shut the door, guys. I'm just getting some like sounds from out there. One sec. All players, All right. get your bat and gloves ready. Shall I bat gloves near ready, Hall? Yeah, everyone. Camera focus, Koro. Bat gloves near ready, Hall. Uh, Jared, there's a question from Ritwik. We asked uh, which is more important, mental or physical fitness? Mental or physical fitness? Um, a lot of people, mental a lot of people tell you that it's mental, right? You'll get a lot of people that tell you it's mental. And that's fine. Like having the mental game is fine, but you have to have the fundamentals, right? And this is what a lot of coaches want to tell you is that these fundamentals, people like Coley, people like Williamson, people like De Villiers, they all, if, if, you've, if you've seen this video, and some of you would have seen it, and it's just a breakdown of me breaking down some of the best players in the world, everyone averaging over 50, they all have the same fundamentals, and, and some of these I'm going to teach you today, okay? Some of these I'm going to show you. You have to have... Along with the mindset, you have to have the fundamentals to go with it. There's no, there's no point having one or the other. If you want to get to the next level, you have to have both, okay? So we've just covered the mindset part and giving you tools to help you out with that. And you'll keep learning about that. Trust me, you'll keep implementing this stuff. Um, you'll learn some of that. You'll, you'll implement some of the meditation techniques. There, maybe sometimes it helps you get to 100. It might help you get from 90 to 100. I personally have never been out in the 90s because I just use the techniques once I get into the 90s and I just, I just bat the same, if not better. Um, so these can really help you out. All right, first thing we'll cover is the grip, okay? We're going to first cover the grip. So I'm hoping that I might be able to show you. Man, I wish I had someone here to film this. But I might be able to show you. So the old way... The old way of picking up a bat still works, guys, and it's really, it's really simple. So who's heard before? I'm just going to kneel down here. Who's heard before about, about the, pist the, the pistol grip, right? We go like this, like this, and we pick it up. Okay. So that still that still works. You have your your right your top, uh, your top hand, this hand. This will point straight down the middle, and then you have your right hand. If I just show you. Right hand will point just down the left side, okay? So this will give you a little bit of an open, open blade. And someone who uses this well and a good one to watch is Brad Coley. Because he talks, if you've seen the masterclass from him, he talks about having that blade, the, the slightly open blade. And what that will do, it will help you manipulate the field with, with the right fundamentals. that will help you manipulate the field um, when you're playing, okay? So that's the first one. That's really simple, right? The grip is super simple. Now, give me a thumbs up if you use a trigger movement. Who uses a trigger movement? Give me a thumbs up if you use one. Say like most of you should. Got two. I think I got three. Big thumbs up right into the camera just to make sure that I've got you, if you use one. Who uses a trigger movement? Okay, cool. I think one of, one of you don't. Okay, cool. That's, that's fine. All right, so trigger movement is something that the modern day players of you have, have taken, okay? So this used to be popular in the 1980s, and it was a back across movement, which you'll see a lot of the players adopting nowadays. But it has changed a little bit, all right? Yeah, I think we've got everyone. I think everyone uses one. Great. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. 
So the trigger movement is something that modern day players have adopted and used and changed a little bit. If any of you have seen Marlis Labashagni from Australia, he didn't, he didn't used to have a, a, the right trigger movement. Now he went to England and played. He adopted the right trigger movement, uses the right one, and now he averages. He averaged 30 in first class cricket. Let me get this right, guys. He averaged 30, right? 30. One season in England, got his trigger movement right, and it is back with right. And now he averages 60 in, in international test cricket. It's crazy, right? But these are the shifts you can make with the right fundamentals. So, trigger movement, which one do I, do I advise my clients to use? Well, back and across, obviously, first of all. With the back and across movement, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to show you what I sort of mean by this, because like, you can't see all of me. If you can see all of me, maybe I can set you guys up. So you might be able to see my feet, hopefully. Oh. I'm trying to set this up so you can see me. We're almost. I'm going to take this off charge. Hang on. Beautiful. Okay. So the first one that you're going to use, obviously you bat just outside leg. You're going to start. You're going to come back here and your front foot will stay up like this. That's it. That's the trigger movement that we want. Back and across, front foot here. If you look at, if you look at Coley, if you look at Williamson, if you look at any of those guys, it's always back and across, just, just slightly, and the front foot stays up. Now, why does the front, why does your, why does the front foot, why are you supposed to stay on your toes? Well, it's going to help one of our later fundamentals that we'll talk about, okay? If you've got it, I know you, you guys have got a trigger right now. Just play around with having that front foot when you when you do that movement. Play around with having that have it being on your toes in that trigger movement. Okay, just play around with that because that's really going to help you. So we'll talk about the next one now. Unweighting your bat, and I'm sure a lot of people really are quite keen to see this. All right, we don't have any other questions. Guys, if you have any other questions along the way, just drop them in the chat, all right? Just drop them in the chat and I'll circle back and answer them. All right. All right, so here's one. This is one fundamental that can give you huge shifts in performance. And these together, you will just improve out of sight, all right? So we're looking at unweighting of the bat now. So if we're in our stance here, the right grip, slightly open blade, we do our trigger movement. We get set, obviously, just as the ball is bowling the ball. Unweighting the bat, this is what Coley, Williamson, everyone does. Your bat comes up to here. So the face goes to point, if, as you can see. Toe of the bat to the air. Now, this is something that Brian Lowry used Rat Coley, Kane Williamson, De Villiers. Drop me a player. If you're, if you're unsure of whether they use this, drop me a player in the chat and I can tell you if they did it or not. Okay? Anyone averaging over 50 in test cricket, they use this fundamental. Right? They're here, in the stance, trigger, up, toe to the sky, face towards point. And there's a big misconception in cricket that you need to, you need to swing the bat from square to square to make the best contact but we know from golf from tennis all these sports that use a bat or a racket that this isn't the most effective way to swing the bat so from here and who's anyone practicing this by the way Yao should be practicing this so if you haven't practiced this get your bat now and yeah practice this all right so after ball's release you're going up to here coming around and through. So it'll go from here, it'll come around, it'll come through like this, like a bat, uh, like a plane, like whoop, around and through. Again, around through the offside. Again, around through mid on. Okay, so try and practice this. Um, if not now, practice it after. Or you can practice it now, I don't mind. 
we are moving a little bit quicker through this part of the session. All right. So that's the unwaiting part. So after that, after you've got those fundamentals down, you'll be working your point of contact. So you would all know what that means. All it is, is you're hitting the ball as late as you can. Okay. So from there, how are you going to make the best connection with it? Back comes up nice and late. You're playing nice and late. Okay. If you can do that, those all together, man, your average next season will increase by over 40% easily. Okay. And I mean easily. Okay. So, the next thing that I want to talk about that you would have seen a little bit there is your bat flow, okay? So your bat flow, obviously you start out and it's that plane of it coming around, okay? So I start out, toe, toe to the sky, face towards point, come around and through, boom, come around and through. So that's your bat flow. That's a successful bat flow, all right? So if you want to time the ball like you see in international cricket, crack that cracking sound off the bat, that's what you're going to practice. Um, putting on like bat flow and obviously the other thing that we see this is more with like more amateur batsmen than, than really really skilled batsmen but one, one thing to bring up is that is that back shoulder coming through or realistically my, my experience with coaching is that you can fix this by point of contact but you can also fix this by just telling them to just hide their back shoulder in their shots. Like that's the, probably the easiest way to fix it is just hide the, hide the back shoulder for as long as they can. Obviously it comes through at the end, but it's trying to hide your back shoulder in your, in your shot. Um, that's the easiest way. Or even dipping your front shoulder into the ball, that helps too. Um, that's one way to fix it. So that would be relevant for probably the younger batsman. Now, I think we've got last thing, last thing I want to talk about. So, in your setup, the reason we unweight the bat um, is obviously to hit, be able to access all areas of the field, right? And have 360 degree access. So from here, you can pull, correct? You can cut, correct? You can drive, you can flick from here. Um, you can sweep, you can reverse sweep. You can just do everything from that position. So that is why that position is so important. And if you don't have any of these fundamentals right now, you obviously need to get help um, to implement them. And obviously to do them correctly. There's no point doing them and then not doing them correctly. Um, the way we do that is set up measurables. And I would say to you guys, look up a photo of like a, a player averaging over 50. Look up a photo of them from the side and you'll be able to see that's, that would be a good measurable for you to use to make sure you're unweighting the bat correctly. Um, and yeah, those are those are the successful fundamentals of batting. And then once you have those down, you just keep working your point of contact and your timing will just get better and better and better. Um, and obviously your individual shots as well, you can work on them. But obviously the, the whole basis and, and where we really see the big leaps in performance is obviously through. Yeah, we got someone practicing. Kustav, my man. Yeah, but make sure you lift your bat up. Make sure you lift your bat up, yeah? Yeah, up nice and high. Toe to the sky. Toe the bat to the sky and then face towards point, yeah? Yeah, a little bit even higher. Higher. Yeah, get it up higher. Yeah, it's okay. It's not too bad. A little bit higher. Right up. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's a bit better. There you go. Anyone else? Like anyone else want to practice this? Bakira, bat near Shurugoro, Oshmit, Shaptik, get your bat and gloves. What Jared had said about the backswing, you just try with that backswing. How far are you comfortable with? It might be, it might, guys, this might be super uncomfortable to start with. I remember my first time practicing this. It might be super uncomfortable practicing this the first time, but how did, how uncomfortable do you think Smith was practicing it for the first time? And then it, all of a sudden it came off, right? So I'll show you again. Now that everyone's got their bats, like I'll show you again. Why not? All right, let's go again. So obviously starting position here, 
going to trigger, lift that bat up, toe to the sky, face towards point. Bat swing comes through, yeah? Toe to the sky, face towards point, round and through. You can practice that trigger movement. I've just got limited space here, okay? Man, this is super valuable for you guys. Yeah, let me see that, um, Asmit. Go again. Yes, love it. Again, yeah. And then you're just trying to get that plane, so it's going to come around and through, yeah? So. Right. Ashmit is having a, a very high back swing. It's good. Yeah. Like the Aussies. Pretty good. That's how you're going yeah, to get the power. Let's see some other ones. Satwick, let's Shattik, see you. Man. Shattik, you show. Ayush and Kumar. You. Yeah. Good. Good. No, that trigger movement gets set earlier, but we'll just look at unweighting the bat, boys. We'll just look at your unweighting position today. Nice. Few more, man. Few more. Yeah, love it. Good work. And remember, after it's after that ball is released, you want that bat to go up. That's why we have that trigger movement. Boom. Good work. Well done. Love it, man. Love it. This will really help you guys out. Nice. And that, yeah, good. Keep that toe, keep that front toe up and that trigger movement. It's good, man. Good work, Satwick. Mm -hmm. See that flow, yeah. Good work. Asif, flow. Arik to Aztec or? Asif. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now bring it forward. Yeah, that's it. That's better. So it's later there. That's good. You're going to start. Hey, Asif, start with it down, though. Start with it here. Start with it here. And then you're going to lift it up. Boom. Yeah. So you lift it up late. So here, up, through. So the boys, the reason that you lift it up late is that you create lag. So think about if you started here and then just swung. But think about if you bang through. Yeah. So you're creating lag. Boom. With your hips. And you're there, from there, you're able to create generate more power. Let's have a look at um, who hasn't come on yet. Yeah, let's let's have a look now. So move move a bit later. Yeah. Mm hmm Good. Show me your offside offside shot. Yeah, cover drive. Show me a cover drive. Yeah. As if come straight come straight towards the camera and play a cover drive. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Good. Yeah, nice and late. Good work. Anyone hasn't come on yet? Uh, Shakti, Costa. Uh, this is yeah, Costa. Yeah, here we go. That was a good one. That was actually a good example. Yeah, yeah. Let's, show, let's show, show him again. This is actually not very old, this boy, either. Nice. He's 11. I'm nice and late. I'm nice and high. Yeah, just get a little bit higher, a little bit higher. You want that toe, toe of the bat pointing to the sky, yeah? Yeah, there we go. Good work. And then it's going to come in and around. So instead of instead of chopping from there, you want it to come boom, in and through. Good work. That's it. Looking good. Anyone else? Ask me. It. Dude, yeah, love it. You're going to generate so much power from that, man. And then from there, like you, you can play expansive shots, sweeps, pulls. It's good. It's not rocket science, guys, but it's something that isn't spoken about that much. Yeah, that's a good bat, flip, bat swing. Look at that. Have a look at the plane of this. The plane of this is beautiful. Ready? Up, round, and through. That'd be good. good. Good work. And guys, this might not feel super comfortable. Feel like I remember having like my third, maybe one hit doing this and it wasn't like super comfortable but you're trust me like your second or like your third hit pretty much your second hit the guys i had man i was out of the nets for maybe a year and a half or something like that maybe a year and a half first hit obviously with the um new like successful fundamentals felt a bit weird but then second one man 
probably battered the the best I ever have, and that's I'm not even lying about that. Um, it might seem weird, but like this is how how much this can actually help your game. Um, so if you haven't had these before, man, this will improve your game twofold. Just um, boys, drop drop me in the chat right now. Drop me in the chat any top takeaways from that, okay? Any top takeaways, um, any way that this that those fundamentals will help you with your game. Just drop them in the chat because obviously I want to make sure that this is um, valuable for you. And obviously any questions, drop them in the chat as well. I'll, I'll leave it open for like a couple of minutes. There has been a question in the uh, live chat. Uh, Shamanandan Prasad uh, had written, uh, Pujara never. Actually, uh, Sham, if you can explain this uh, in the chat, means uh, on the back swing you are talking about, Pujara. If you are listening oh. to me, Sham. Mm -hmm. There is a question in the live chat of YouTube uh, mm -hmm. from Shamanandan Prasad, Pujara never. Oh yeah, Pujara. Yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you right now. I'll look him up and I'll do an analysis, and I can tell you right now if he did. All right. Just give me a couple of seconds. All right. If any of you watched, um, if any what any of you watched the New Zealand England game too, there was Devin Conway. Also, he's also one that has a nice flow of his bat. Okay. All right. Let me just have a look at this real quick. Uh, uh, Sham, if you can elaborate your question. I said, there is a question from Ayush Kumar. Uh, sir, how to handle that pressure of getting so many runs in over or a spell? Ayush is in the live studio now. There's a question in the internal chat. Sir, how to handle that pressure of getting so many runs in over or a spell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. So many runs. So, like, with the way with, like, with unweighting the bat and how that works, which is one one reason why, you know, Pujara, um, what does he average? Does anyone know? Because I don't actually don't know how much he averages. Let me just have a quick look. Because I can kind of relate this to this other question. So, I kind of hit two birds with one stone right now. Uh, Pujara average. All right. Yeah. So he, yeah, he averages forty six and a half, and obviously that's not that's not too bad. But I'll tell you something else who averages forty six and a half, and that's Ross Taylor. And the, and um, I did have a look at footage. He does have a little like he doesn't unweight it properly. Um, he does have a little like flow. But there's a reason why, obviously, he averages, you know, 46 and a half in tests and not 50, you know. And generally, like, that will come as well from when he plays overseas. If you don't overweight your bat and you're playing in England, you're in trouble, okay? Because um, the ball swings around so much. That's why Conway was able to score 200, because he unweights his bat. Now, on to the other question, how do you deal with pressure of hitting those runs, man? The, the first question is like why like why do you have to, why is that because basically what pressure means boys is that you are getting taken away off the present moment okay the thing with unweighting your bat is you can switch gears you, like Williams Winston Coley they can play three formats why because they unweight their bat okay they can they have gears when they play and you can actually transition quicker between the formats if you unweight your bat. So, meaning, if there's, like, how to deal with the pressure of scoring those runs, first of all, you're going to use the techniques that we've shown you. 
to be present. Okay. You need to be present. That's first, first thing. Second thing is you need to be, have the skill to transition from maybe you're scoring five and over to maybe you're scoring, you have to having to score 10 and over. Okay. And you got to, you got to recognize that sometimes it's not going to like, sometimes it won't happen for you. Like sometimes you're going to try your hardest, you know, you're going to hit, you might hit 40 runs and 20 balls and, and you need five more. Good example of this is Brathwaite. When Brathwaite had to score a ridiculous amount of runs in the, in this game against New Zealand, he hit like, he hit no, he hit the quickest hundred at the tournament. What happened? They needed six runs off six balls and he was already in that gear of hitting sixes and he found the outfielder, right? So you gotta recognize be mature and if you need a lot of runs, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna try. And if you unweight your bat, first of all, you're gonna have this enough skill to be able to execute, okay? So the, how do you best execute? It's just being present. It's dealing with that pressure by being present, by using breathing techniques, by slowing down your breathing, by using your pre-performance routines in those scenarios. Everything, every game situation, it will all come back to your mindset. Once you have the fundamentals down, everything will just come back to your mindset, how well you manage the pressure, everything like that. I think Williamson won... At least two games, more games in the World Cup, but at least two big games where New Zealand was just under the pump and he was able to just bat through the innings, manage his emotions, wickets were falling all around him, big pressure. He just managed managed his emotions so well. So it'll most of it will come back to that once you have, um, obviously, once you have your fundamentals down. Hope that makes sense. Again, guys, drop any takeaways any questions in the chat i'll leave it open for like two more minutes just hammer the chat and i can just like answer questions i'll read any takeaways out um and then we'll wrap up after that so any takeaways um any any questions anything guys just drop it in the chat uh jared there's a question uh, from me uh for the kids because we have over here a uh, various age group teams like uh, under 12, uh, you also have in Australia, but here to build up the team is a bit difficult. Like a guy who is fit enough, he is playing for under 11 as well as up to under 19. A uh, smaller kid. And there are some kids who are in 16, sometimes not getting, uh, not in for under 19. So how to combine the team or how to have this kid's mindset Suppose Ashmit or uh, Ayush or Kostav, uh, this Kostav and Ayush, they are young. Like Kostav might be getting a not in for under 15, but whereas Ayush is not getting. When Ashmit was a junior, he was getting uh, from under 12 age, he was getting a not in for under 15 as well as under 17. Now, how to switch in and switch out of these kids who are getting in the higher uh, team uh, chance means we're getting chance for, to play in the higher age group. So you please explain uh, for the kids. So your question was how to how to give them like a better mindset or how to um, give them the best chance of performing at, at the higher age group. Yeah, obviously that's it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so the first thing, like the best thing uh, that a coach can like show a young player is emotional maturity. And your emotional maturity in life and in sport can be different. Okay, they can they can obviously be separate. If you can do both, like you're you're gonna win. <laughs> if you can do the sport part, obviously that's gonna work for cricket. So it's to teach them emotional maturity, and it's to show them that look, like you're you're the same person whether you get five runs or whether you get a hundred. Like whether you make whether you make a selection or whether you don't, that you're the same the same person. As long as you're working on the right things, as long as you're giving them the successful fundamentals of batting, and they know and they have congruency in that they're obviously they're doing the right things, they have clarity and purpose on where they're going. 
Um, and obviously they're being taught the right mindset tools. There's no reason why they can't gain the emotional maturity to play up the level. You know what I mean? And they might have, they might have a run of low scores, but the one score, the one time that they deal with that and they're able to use the techniques that you show them and the breathing techniques, um, and obviously learning more about their game. That's a pretty, that one's pretty cliche, but learning that, their performance doesn't make them who they are. You know, a lot of Indians will attach, um, and like as well as Australians and, and New Zealanders, once you get up levels in, in cricket, you start attaching yourself to what team you're playing or what the amount of runs you're getting or the, the shirt that you're pulling on to go and play. Not, you can't attach your emotions to anything outside of um, your own, what you can control and all you can control is your emotional state at the end of the day. So my advice to the boys, if they are like playing up a level is you can't worry about anything on the external. You can only control what you can control. Right. And what I mean by that, let's get this really clear. What I mean by that is once you walk out onto that field, you can only control your emotions. You can't control what the conditions are doing. You can't control what the bowler is going to bowl to you. If you can just control what you can control and you're working on the right fundamentals, that's all you can do. So that's my advice for that. I think we might have another question as well. Oh no. Boys, any other questions? I hope that that ends your question. Yeah, there's a question. Uh, cool. From Shyan Chatterjee, would you like to ask, uh, ask how to keep your our mind focused while playing long innings? Mm, yeah, yeah, good. That's a good question. Well, the the first the the first thing again to say again is just always being present and and having those pre performance routines that you use regularly throughout the game to keep yourself present. Sometimes in games, it'll just get to a stage where you're so confident, you're so comfortable that you can just perform. Okay it can get to that level where you don't need any of this stuff to, or the performance routines or the breathing techniques. Like it might get to a stage where you might not need that until you get into the nineties, right? Or you might not need that till you get into the, you know, non 98, right? You might not need any of that stuff, but it's obviously just important to have it because we know that if you are, let's say like what some people will say to me is that they lose focus. I know that it's not a focus thing. You're just focusing on the wrong thing. That's all it is. Your focus has come away from internal and it's gone into like the external. It's gone into, oh my God, I'm on 47. Man, what if I don't get this 50? Um, what if I, man, what if I get out of the 90s today? How, and then all these thoughts start going through your head and then that's where you lose focus, okay? That's, let's get that clear. Because you can be focused, like you can, like, like most of you will be focused for the majority of the time. You bat. You might just get a thought or two that that creeps in, um, something that you're maybe you're worried about getting out or fear of failure. It all just comes back to, hey, like we just need to be present, um, and yeah, just using techniques to be present. Obviously, other things that can help with that is like you know, in game, in game, like nutrition and that, and there's a lot of like, that's probably more of a intricate part of what I teach my clients is just obviously having like good nutrition in games. One little, one little trick, um, that marathon runners use marathon runners will have like one, like a lolly. I'm not saying go smash a bag of lollies while you're batting, but you can eat like one lolly and what that will do is give you a sugar hit to your brain um, and basically that will like give you really quick energy, all right? Um, that's one little trick that that you can use. But maybe some people drink like Powerades or Gatorades. That's another good one to like to drink. But that that's more intricate, guys. Like I would just, for the younger guy, younger ones, just focus on being present. Like you guys have enough energy to not need the extra stuff. Just literally just focus on being present in that present moment, all right? Um, if anyone has any other questions, there is one more question from the viewer. 
does our diet and nutrition reflect on mindset on a reflects our mindset mm, good question good question i think it, it can it can like it depends how secure you are with yourself you could be you could still be a healthy weight and you know and be a little bit like have a little bit of like extra skin or whatever and you can still really perform right or you, you could even be you could be a big a, a bigger guy and you can still perform but for you obviously to, to perform at a high level and to have the confidence to be able to play all day and not have cramps and to be able to battle all day and not get tired it can reflect your mindset what i'm saying is that it can reflect your mindset, but it also depends on what sort of person you are as well, if that makes sense. Some people might be like a little bit unfit and still be able to score 100 because their their mindset could, and, and they could be really secure with themselves. So it can it can reflect it. And obviously if you're playing a really high level, uh, it's, gonna, it's going to affect it. At lower levels, maybe not, but as you go up the grades and up the levels, yeah, it'll affect it for sure. So I think um, everyone who's looking to play like serious cricket is to learn about that stuff early. So uh, there is one more question: What mm. makes ABD different from others, on your uh, from your perspective point of view? Mm. Good question. Really good question. And he's someone who's able to do. He's able to do the basics well for really lo for, for a really long time if you see him play ipl and things like that the reason he's so good is because he does the basics well for so long he his mechanics and the way that he hits the, he hits the ball is man it's almost like, none. like his point of contact is like amazing like he must have drilled that for forever um he has an un amazing unweighted bat um, and that allows him to play 360 degrees. It opens up every shot for him. Um, he has obviously he has a trigger move. That's another successful fundamental of batting. And he's able to just do it for longer. I think you can compare, you can definitely compare him to other people. Like I don't think he's, I don't think he's hit a lot different from like, you know, like Coley or, you know, those guys that average really high. But the same th the similar thing still follows is that him and, and like other people that have averages like him, he's just able to do the fundamentals for really long periods of time. Um, and I think his shot, obviously his shot range, he was obviously able to get his fundamentals right early because he has such a range of shots and, and plays a lot of shots well. That's what I would say that makes him different. Uh, got this sir, one. How so, to improve? Uh, it has already been answered. Yeah, how to yeah, I'd say so. improve adversity? It's already answered during yeah, your say, yeah, I could deliberation. Just... So, I like, no further like questions. Brief, like brief... If there's no other questions, I'll just do a brief answer on that one. Um, just as long as there's no other questions, boys. Or anyone who's watching, girls, boys. Uh, boys who are in the studio, Ashmit, uh, Ayush, Shatik, do you have any uh, further questions? Also, Asif, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Do Asha, there is a question from Robert Raina. How would you deal with doubt in younger kids? Yeah, man. First of all, what up, Robert? I know, I know, Robert. Myself, doubt in younger kids. Yeah, and I'm assuming you mean young kids are doubting themselves. Again, like it's just going to come back to trying to give them tools. Number one is giving them tools early and making them recognize that this game once they have good skills and good fundamentals it's going to be down to their mindset 
So the earlier that you can teach them different tools to manage their emotions, which I, I was unfortunate that I didn't have during my representative days, okay? If I did, I'm sure I would have went away to carnivals and went much better um, in state carnivals and things like that. But if they can get hold of these concepts early and get emotional maturity early, like the earlier, the better, right? So if you have someone like a mentor like yourself, Robert, who, who are coaching these kids, obviously give them these tools early to teach them emotional, emotional maturity early. The fact that they are the same person where they get a low score, they get a big score, to teach them about emotional variance and to keep it level whether they get 100 or 1, their emotions shouldn't change. Because you'll see a lot of kids get runs, man, and, you know, they're back at training telling everyone about it, you know, or they're back home telling telling everyone about it. Just tell them, just be like, hey, like, I know you love this sport. At the same time, like, celebrate it still. Still celebrate it, but move on. You know what I mean? Like, just celebrate it quickly. All right, next game. Keep your emotions level because that's going to give the kids the best chance to just go out and perform. So just teaching them these concepts early is going to be the best thing for them. And that answers the question. I will give it. Uh, Any thank other you, last uh, Jared. minute questions? Uh, thank you, Jared. Uh, the, kids, the kids are having classes from 10 15, the school online classes. Uh, and thank you. We are lucky to have you in our uh, class today. And we look forward to have you in the future days to come. And moreover, I'll share your group link with my students over here, as well as in the, if you can share in the comment box once this video gets uploaded in the YouTube, so that uh, the kids get attached with the high performance uh, uh, cricket group which you operate. Jared? Yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, thank I'll you so much. Yes, please. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, basically, as a little like closing statement, um, if like if anyone watching this YouTube video, um, anyone's live right now, as a closing statement, if you need more help with this, um, and you really want more help implementing these these tools and these fundamentals um you can go to my facebook which is exactly the same as my name on here you can add me on facebook if you click the cover photo on my facebook the group's right there that he's talking about so high performance for batsmen it's also on my profile as well it's all over my profile so you'll be able to just answer the membership questions join that and basically i can see how i can help so if anyone just want is like oh my god i just want a little bit of help with this yeah, just drop drop a comment or just add me on Facebook and reach out and I'll see how I can help you. And um, boys, as a close statement to you guys, man, it was good to be here. It was good to share some knowledge with you guys. Um, obviously, it's good to pass on knowledge that I didn't have when I was younger. Um, a lot of coaches won't show you. A lot of experts won't show you. Um, it was awesome to, to pass some of this on. And yeah, boys, let me know how you go training with those new fundamentals. I reckon you guys will kill it. So as a statement from me, thanks for having me on here. And yeah, I'm sure I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. And uh, Kostov, uh, we'll put your question to Jared in his Facebook uh, uh, group. You will be added to that group soon you have a question i'll uh, forward call for that will forward that question for you thank you and uh, i'm returning back to the backstage editor also thanks guys thank you sir the, so let me just conclude this and nice to have you <coughs> so heading off and so, viewers, thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And those who are watching this on the recorded version, just 
telling you if you have liked this please like give it a uh, give a like in our uh, it is given right below just give it a like and do subscribe us for more contents like this and uh, press the bell icon uh, to get updated as soon as we schedule a, a live program like this we will be having our open online classes uh, on saturday and sunday we have always uh, so on uh, this coming saturday and sunday we will be having a class and as soon as we it will be scheduled it will be notified if you press the bell icon properly and put on the all button so if you want to follow us and uh, uh, please do check the ids given in the description below uh, follow us on instagram and twitter like our facebook page uh, like us on facebook we have a facebook page and we give uh, day, day to day updates on our uh, academy and on various topics so do like our page and also do check out the high performance back uh, high performance of batting group on facebook which is coordinated by uh, uh, jared himself so thank you thanks for watching see you in our next open online classes until then it's me orkum khaji peacing out